All right, guys, welcome to your next loader tutorial. Now, I said I was going to do a completely custom loader with um, Volley or with a network call in it. Uh, it doesn't matter what the network library you use, I'll use Volley because I use it normally. Um, not going to do that this video, guys. Quick thing I want to point out uh, I want to point out something very important about loaders, which is really, 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 really cool. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people um, feel that the loaders are very limiting in terms of being able to do like more data loads and forcing loads so last time we seen that the button force sends a broadcast and it you know broadcasts to that and the loader can listen well the reason we did it that way this shows that uh, the loader can receive a signal and do a reload a great example is if a database table changes as we mentioned but what if you want to call the loader directly well there is a way of doing that so this init loader callback actually returns the loader from on create load which is brilliant so we can actually have a copy of our loader appear okay okay so we can actually have our loader there and we can say our loader is equal to that and we can cast it okay and now we've access to our loader in our code so we can actually call methods on the loader in here ready to go and the final thing you have to be aware of when you're doing this is that here you have to set them to null in on loader reset which means the loader has been destroyed this generally happens when the activity is gone so instead of calling our string loader uh, our broadcast let's just actually call loader dot and we'll add a method in our string loader void load new strings and we'll just call force load in here okay this is just to show that we're going like I could just call force load directly it's a public method but I'm not going to I'm actually just going to call load new strings okay and I'll just start up an emulator that'll actually take a bit give me one second okay guys so we're back and we have the uh, loader running up so the ADB is initializing getting the logs ready So as you can see, loading new data, and then if we hit the button, loading new data again. So there you can see that loaders can actually have methods, and you can call those methods manually. Now normally I'd add a null check around, I'd wrap this in a null check, because the loader can end up being null. So this is very useful, and it's something I've used before for paging. You can just call page up, and you can actually have the loader return. It doesn't, like, this loader could, uh, was actually returning uh, paged data sets. So it would return an object which would contain a page and a list of, and a list of that, and then I'd assemble all the pages here into in the adapter. So the adapter had a method called uh, add pay or page uh, load page, and it would actually combine all the pages into one big adapter. Now it was a list of lists. It was a little crazy. Um, it was actually a tree set of lists and the paging. So I would go through and I'd find I'd calculate the total. Uh, amount in all the lists it, it, it was very crazy but it worked really really well and it was super effective so you can do paging with loaders it's quite easy to do and that's one of the advantages of loaders is being able to do stuff like this so the system manages the loader and the great advantage of this is if we rotate this uh, control f11 and look at the logs okay so as you can see, loading new data, let's do a control F11 again. Look at that, the loader's not loading any new data. It's just reusing our cache. So it's never getting into the background, it's just re it's just doing this part of it here, as we talked about last time. So loaders are super powerful observers. They can be used to observe a data set, and they're really, really cool. And I love using them, because they've they're brilliant. Now there are times when you don't want to observe data, you just literally want to say, go database, get stuff. Then you use, you know, Oryx Java or an async task or a custom thread or something crazy. But for observing a data set like a list, the loader is where it's at. And the great advantage is all the database operations are in the background. Snappy app. Brilliant. So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there here. This is a very quick thing I wanted to point out. Next video, we're going to get on to the network calls inside a loader, which is awesome.